Well, in this uh, short video, we're going to talk about automatic voltage regulators and the need for them. Uh, this is one of the three which are installed in MCR21. Uh, they take raw mains in uh, in the 190 to 260 volt range and correct it to the set voltage of 240. Now, this is the input and the output. It's very simple. Inside there's a big transformer, a servo amplifier and uh, a motor driven variac. Now, you may be wondering why it's necessary to do this. In these days, switch mode power supplies don't care really what their input voltage is. But in 1963, things were different. This is a typical BBC distribution amplifier unit and it has its own input transformer and regulator. You'll see that the heatsink on this is quite small. That's because it only needs to correct for a modest range of input voltages. This is the headroom. Also uh, a certain amount to do with any ripple which is on the uh, smoothed DC. Uh, now if you think about this input window, the height the amount of voltage that is surplus that the regulator is going to burn off. All this makes for heat and if it's too much you end up with a lot of heat and a bigger heat sink and a bigger transformer multiplied by everything in the vehicle and it starts to run away out of control. So what you have is a pre-regulator, the AVR, to give you a small voltage mains variation which can be dealt with with a small headroom of excess voltage from the transformer rectifier into the regulator and this all helps to keep the heat down and give a stable output. Now uh, we're going to take the lid off and have a look at the inside and put some mains on it and hopefully show you it whizzing round according to the change of input voltage. These are OBA screws. Due to a marvellous coincidence, OBA uh, is the same thread as M6, but these are real authentic OBA vintage ones. Last one. This uh, top section with the knife and connectors on, uh, that's the input and the output and their 32 amp rating. Nifen is an interesting connector. They've been available for a very large number of years and are still available for new work. And uh, that's now loose and the whole top comes off like that. i sort of park that there temporarily and this is the, uh, the lid. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Now we'll have a, a quick look at the inside and we've just parked the two knife and connectors there. They're still wired in so that a bit wobbly but they will sit there quite well and uh, this exposes the interior. The principal component is the big transformer here, big and heavy. It's a buck boost transformer and it's wired with the secondary in series with the mains and the primary is fed from the variac. The variac is motor driven through this reduction gear and it's controlled by the servo amplifier. The servo amplifier looks at the output voltage and provides a signal to the motor to drive the variac in the correct direction, remember the book boost business, uh, to correct the output voltage as the input voltage waves. So we've dealt with the major components uh, on the automatic voltage regulator but of note is the pot there which is used to set the output voltage to whatever you choose. In this case 240. And we're going to set up in a moment uh, an input uh, uh, variac so that we can vary the input voltage and see that the output voltage remains reasonably steady when you can watch the motor going round. Well, here we have uh, set up a demonstration for you. We have a variac on the input to change the input voltage to the automatic voltage regulator and a rather smart digital meter on the output, which is currently registering 240.3. So now for the moment of truth, we change the input voltage. Uh, we'll turn it down first of all and watch the variac. 
Did you see it move? Down a bit more. We're down to 210. 205 input. And it's interesting to note that the output is rock steady at 240. Down a bit further. 200. 195. And we're approaching the edge of correction. Uh, if you're able to spot this block here is just a gnat away from those two micro switches which are end of travel limit switches. Increasing the voltage now and the variac is following the input voltage changing and correcting it nicely and we're now back to 240 in and we can go to an over voltage situation. That's now 260 in and the output is still at 240 and the variac has actually come round and hit the high voltage limit switch so I'm just going to bring it back a tad off the limit switch and it will deal with reasonably rapid fluctuations of the input voltage which might be caused by the change of the load uh, if you think about the the way it would be arranged, you'll have a long piece of wire from some convenient generator or main supply, and as the load changes, the out the voltage supplied to the vehicle changes, and that's what the AVRs are correcting. Like that. I could play with this all day. <laughs> now. Uh, for this uh, extra demonstration we've added a, a modest little load I plugged in a uh, old thumb heater set through one kilowatt and now if you look at the input current meter uh, it's reading just a shade over 4 amps which is what you'd expect for 240 volts on a 1 kilowatt load. It's just worth mentioning in relation to the output current meter here that it's arranged as a times 2. It was originally 0 to 5 amps but I've fiddled with it and it now reads 0 to 10 amps so uh, that's the reason why there is uh, in felt tip uh, extra calibration on the glass in the true budge fashion. This is what I want to show is that if I reduce the input voltage the AVR is correcting it so the output voltage is staying the same but you can see here that the input current is increasing so that the VA stays the same in the load. No, that one doesn't make it. Yeah, you can see it's... Yes. Yeah. So what we're going to do about that then?